Welcome to lesson 3H. This is the final muscle lesson, and it's a review of all the muscles we've covered, of all the movements for those muscles, and finally, all the stretches for those muscles as well. There will be less explanation than the other videos, because I've already covered most of it, and I want you to totally focus on the muscle, the movement, and the stretch by looking at the pictures that you see. Trapezius. The following motions are of a shrug. Remember, this is an upright row. It works the trapezius, but it also works the rear deltoids. The following are examples of how to stretch the trapezius. Remember, with all the stretching movements, we try to make the muscle as long as possible for as long as possible. Deltoids. Remember, the deltoids have three muscles, in the front, in the middle, and in the back. If you want to work the front, you raise to the front. If you want to work the middle deltoid muscle, you raise to the side. If you want to work the rear part of the deltoid, you bend over and raise to the rear. The overhead pressing movement works the deltoids, but you also work the triceps when you press over your head. Here are some movements that help you stretch the deltoids. Remember, with all the stretching movements, we try to make the muscle as long as possible for as long as possible. Biceps. Here are a variety of curling motions. Don't forget to alternate your grip for variety. Sometimes thumbs out, sometimes thumbs up, sometimes thumbs in. Here are some images of bicep stretches. This is the last time I pointed out during this video, but remember, when you stretch, make the muscle as long as possible for as long as possible. Triceps. Here are some tricep extension movements. Here's how you can stretch the triceps. Pectoralis. These first few movements are flies. Remember, they isolate the chest. The only other muscle that might work during a fly movement is the front part of the deltoid. Don't forget about the bench angles. On an incline, you work the top part of the chest, a flat angle, you work the middle part, and the decline angle, you work the bottom part of the chest. Mm -hmm. 
Now we get to the pressing movements, and this is where the triceps get involved. The different angles of a pressing movement also work the different parts of the pectoralis. Here's how we stretch the pectoralis. Latissimus dorsi. Here's a look at how we work our latissimus dorsi with a pulling motion. There are many other muscles that contract when pulling, but we haven't gone over those yet. So for now we are focusing on the biggest muscle in the middle of the back, the latissimus dorsi. Once we get down to this angle and we're pulling into our body, we call it a seated row. Here we have a single arm dumbbell row and a bent over dumbbell row. And here are some images on how to stretch the latissimus dorsi. Abdominals. When you do a short crunching or curling motion, the focus is on the abdominals. Here's a reverse crunch. Here's an image of a plank as he's tightening his core. Hip flexors. Remember, when you hook your feet or your feet go against gravity, you are now using your hip flexors with your abdominal movement. So all these movements you see here now are abdominal movements, but the hip flexors are involved. This is a leg lift. Obliques. All you have to do to get your obliques involved is give a twist at the top part of your abdominal movement. The side that you're twisting toward is the side that's getting more of the work. The reason is because it is the side that is contracting to pull you over. Here's how we stretch the abdominal wall. Here's how we stretch our obliques. Here are a variety of ways we can stretch our hips. <laughs> lower back. Don't forget about exercising your lower back. You need to keep balance between all muscles, but especially between the abdominals and the lower back to avoid injury. If you do 10 sets of abs, you should do 10 sets of lower back extension movements to stay balanced. The best way to stretch your lower back is some variation of stretching forward and holding your position. Glute 
gluteus maximus. These next movements are called hip extension movements. Notice how you squeeze the butt and bring the hamstring back. Here's another version of the hip extension, but off of the floor. The rest of the movements are leg pushing movements. This is a squat. This is a lunge. Here are some great ways to stretch your gluteus maximus. Quadriceps. This extension movement is the only way to isolate the quadriceps. The rest of the movements are push movements that involve the other muscles in the legs. Here's how we stretch our quadriceps. Hamstrings. These curl movements on the first two pictures is the only way to isolate the hamstrings. I forgot to cover these two movements on the legs video. This movement is called a good morning and it focuses on the hamstrings. You can do it with a barbell or with dumbbells. Here are some lunges, a goblet squat, and a kettlebell swing. Here are some different ways to stretch the hamstrings. Gastrocnemius. All these movements here are called a calf raise. You can do them while you're standing or you can do them while you're sitting. And finally, how to stretch the gastrocnemius. If you lean forward, you're probably gonna get your hamstring involved while you're stretching your gastrocnemius. There's a lot of information on this video. Make sure you understand everything that is on it and all the previous muscle videos before. All those videos are the number three and a letter. This is like a chapter test at the end of a unit. If you need to go back and look at it again, feel free. Good luck, see you next time.